What is going on, CEOs? Veneer will be here with another episode of the Remote CEO Show. Today, I am here with Ratish Purinch, the head of marketing at Printful, who don't know uh, what Printful is yet. It's one of the biggest print-on-demand startups that allows you to create all sorts of custom products for your clients without having to have an inventory, which is super cool. Now, Printful has over 1,000 employees now and several fulfillment centers. And no matter what your business model is, you can find a way to incorporate their service in your business. So I'm very, very excited for this conversation. So Radish, how are you doing today? Great. Psyched to be on your show. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here, by the way. Radish, before we start diving into the questions, um, can you give us a bit of a background on how your company started and what type of problem the company was trying to solve? Um, so it's, we'll celebrate our seventh birthday this summer. So uh, we have founders, I probably have to say, have built several businesses trying to solve their own problems. So uh, I have to go a little bit back before Printful. There's still an e-commerce called Start, Start Vitamins. Uh, which sells uh, motivational stuff. So get shit done, posters, t-shirts, mugs, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, back then uh, we had a successful startup here in Riga, Latvia, where uh, in Europe, where we are located. So we needed some cool startup posters on, on our walls. And we were looking around, is there anything so cool which we want to put on, on our walls? So uh, we checked around there. There wasn't something we really liked. So... Uh, we designed it ourselves, some cool posters, find some cool quotes, put on the walls and uh, decided, hey, maybe we can start sell these. With posters, it's super easy. You have to just have one printer, you cut it and then ship it. So it's pretty easy to start with that. And uh, business well, pretty well. So I think our posters are now also on the office walls on Twitter, Google and some other pretty big, big companies as we can see. So I bought them. And uh, we're trying to look for someone who, how can we scale up? So who, how can we add t-shirts? And when you start selling t-shirts, it's uh, many colors, many sizes. So lots of inventory and uh, you have to pre-order something in bulk. So you have to risk with sometimes a couple of thousand dollars. We didn't want it to actually do. We didn't know if they, if our audience will want to buy that. So only when we started looking around, is there someone who can do that on demand, have a great API, good quality, quick turnaround times. And uh, yeah, there were some companies, but they didn't tick all the check boxes. For example, one of the things we also were looking for API, there was someone who can do manual ordering, but it's manual. We are IT company, no, no manual. So, and uh, there it was, the idea of Printful was born and we started with posters, with t-shirts. And now uh, when we started with a couple of products now, almost seven years later, we have more than 200 products. I think 230 different when you can upload your designs. I'm not counting in sizes and colors. That comes also into play. And we are selling globally. We started in the US and now we have locations in Europe, Regal Latvia recently launched location in Spain, Barcelona. Uh, next one also in Canada and basically uh, growing globally and I will uh, I, I know that soon we'll have locations in other places of the world as well so pretty, pretty crazy ride and uh, I'm, I'm really uh, happy that I'm be able to part of this journey at this stage and for the company I think sky's the limit we can do big big things in the future for sure it's super super exciting we're talking about this before uh, we started recording the episode that i've been using Printful for quite a bit and it did try other companies as well i'm not gonna lie <laughs> but there is nothing compared i i have to admit not because you're on on the call with us today but it is very true listen today's conversation is about two topics on one hand i do want to talk about the products you sell and absolutely want my listeners to understand how they can incorporate them in their workflow, whether they're selling already products or if they have a service-based business, like, uh, you know, if you have an agency or something to just increase brand recognition and, and, um, but also I do want to talk about scaling because you guys are doing a phenomenal job at that. So let's start from the product side. A lot of my listeners are freelancers and solopreneurs that are about to scale their small businesses. So can you give us an example of how they can use Printful to increase brand loyalty? So um, we, we, 
uh, we have thousands of customers and uh, most of them want to stay uh, anonymous uh, that uh, that uh, then customer do not know that use Printful. But I have a few examples that I can share. One of them is uh, The Economist. So it's a major media company in the UK. I think they have a newspaper, also a media portal. And they use us to fulfill their own merch. So uh, they use us for t-shirts and that kind of stuff. So of course their core main business is something totally different. They sell news, they sell media. And then they create this additional, uh, basically brand channel uh, by just offering fresh merch. And in this case, uh, you don't have to own the warehouse. The only thing you have to know, the economist, you can upload the logo on our website. You don't even have to do a photo shoot because we have mock-ups in place. So with just a few clicks of the buttons, if you have a logo ready to go, you can publish the, your merch on the website. And if someone buys on a one item, 10 items, 100 items, there will be a company fulfilled. There. Either the customers in the US or Europe get a quick turnaround time. Of course, you can't compete with Amazon uh, in this way because uh, it's print on demand still. We are not producing anything uh, which go wasteful basically. It's, it's also made to wear concept, which also you can sell as part of your thing. But that's the way how we create additional brand, brand value to the customer. And I want to use another example, which I usually do when I talk on a FATCA podcast. Do you have a merch store? Uh, Personally, not yet. So it's something which any podcast also can do. It's an additional way how you can reach your listeners as well. So by offering a podcast merch, it was uh, previously, it was crazy to do because a lot of hustle. Now it's, I would say it's super easy. And if you sell one item or a hundred items, it's, it doesn't matter. So you can offer it and you can offer this to your listeners. If they don't want to buy, it's their problem if there will be a buyers, no problem. I don't know if you can sell a million t-shirts, we'll be there you for to fulfill them. And uh, that's the magic behind that. And so now we are also benefiting of uh, social media growth as well. And influencer, mainly they probably, it's not their main income stream. They uh, probably sell ads on their social media accounts. And then uh, as you have a huge following, of course they want to, be like you. So one of the ways how to do that is buy your merch and support you, what you're bringing to them and bring the value of what you talk about, speak on the video and stuff like that. So that's also one of the typical ways how you add this additional income stream, basically your main business. For sure. Super cool. Super cool. Listen, as an Amazon seller myself, you know, like for those the people that are listening to the podcast, they know that I have a digital marketing agency, but I've also been big in, in Amazon. I know that there's a huge problem with excess inventory. We were talking about this at the beginning of the show today. So for those who are selling online, how can they incorporate print on demand in the business model when they're already selling clothing as, as a business model? Is there a way that you can incorporate both on one website, maybe on one side have items that don't require different sizing and then yours, let's say on a Shopify store? It's a little bit challenging because uh, what usually customer expects is that everything will come in the same package. So it's, it's usually when you pack, if you use different providers, uh, it will come in two shipments, two packages. And that's something you have to set expectation that someone else uh, fulfilling your orders. In our case, honestly, if you will order a poster and a mug, it's something impossible to put in basically the same package. It also will come to your two shipments. So that's about set of expectations. And for those who are already selling something on Amazon, uh, maybe you hold your inventory and you're doing, I know you maybe you're selling t-shirts uh, super easy. You have a lot of them. It makes sense for you to order in bulk. But you do not know if your audience will like other products. So with print on demand, you can test. Okay, maybe I'll try to sell leggings. Maybe I'll start selling embroidered hats or backpacks or maybe beanbags, what I would say. It's a way how you can test and see if your audience will love these products. And if uh, I know someone's buying 1,000 items from you every month, the same design, same products, I would say for you as a business owner, and if you're ready to deal with the shipping and everything else, probably makes sense to buy something in bulk for someone else and then deal with shipping. Maybe you'll get some additional margins. But you want to maybe travel around, enjoy that part, and just uh, see that someone just takes care of your business. Pretty normal way how to go. One thing, test, 
And also there's unlimited, unlimited scaling, I would like to say. Of course, it's not unlimited, but in our size, as uh, we have sold, I think now we're at 19 million items in the last uh, last six years. I think uh, 10 is 10 million is in the last year. So we are big ass company, <laughs> and we can basically deal with any volume. Uh, it's now a little bit challenging with what's happening as e-commerce growing, and we have backlog. But we're investing a lot of money to keep up with demand and uh, to keep our customers happy because we they hate the situation that you have to wait so long for a product as you do. So when during the holiday season, it's also pretty crucial that you can outsource maybe this part of the business that you can easily, hey, I need more help. I will go to print on demand. Uh, I can't deal with this volume myself. Otherwise, you have to deal probably with hiring and that kind of stuff. Print on demand, it's, it's a little easier. So it's also good to keep both combos, combos part. Um, I hope I answered your question. <laughs> no, a hundred percent. Honestly, you just open up a new set of uh, ideas because I know that a huge problem for businesses is uh, testing new ideas. All right. As an Amazon seller myself, I repeat this, but it's important to understand that if I do want to launch a new product, it's a long process, right? You got to find the right sourcing uh, company. You got to you got to be able to order and and have enough uh, money to order several different sizes, and then hoping hoping that you're gonna get the sales. But with this, you can actually really be super swift. You can try something new, see if it works, and as you said, if it works at the very beginning, you can scale as much as you want. But then you can always jump off that specific testing uh, ground it and, and start ordering in bulk on your own later. Yeah, super, plus, super cool. Yeah, go ahead. Plus, plus the mock-ups as well. So usually when you do yeah. it on your own, you have to do a photo shoot. Here, to kickstart, to test an idea, it's already there. And we have, and some popular products, I think we have even 15, even more options for you actually free to, to push to your store and for a customer to see how, how your design could look on, on a human, on, on a person. Awesome. For sure. Listen, I'm going to switch gears for a moment here. So I want to talk about growth. You guys experienced an amazing growth in the past year. So can you tell us uh, your journey and how um, partnerships and marketing influenced your growth since day one? Mm -hmm. So uh, I joined a company almost four years ago. So and been part of this journey uh, myself as well as a manager. I joined uh, to the marketing team when we were just five. So five people. Now we are more than fifty. So I can't manage a team as used to be used to, used to be managed previously. Also, of course, other departments has grown in a similar pace, even faster, or also big big companies. So uh, how I, I would say that we have three main channels, how we acquire new customers. So I can easily talk about that. One, uh, I even had a slide uh, during the last all hands meeting, SEO mm -hmm. is king. So we invest a lot of, lot of time in SEO. And as we are in a totally new business model, a lot of people even do not know it's so easy to launch your e-commerce store. You don't have to, basically it's low risk business idea. One of, uh, it's usually you have to order, I don't know, 15 or 20 shirts. So we have to uh, spend a lot of time educating that something like that even exists. So it's one thing with uh, to be an answer to uh, people searches on Google and Bing. Of course, we have, to, we want to take care of that. Now, custom t-shirt, DTG printing, print on demand, uh, I know custom phone cases, all that kind of stuff. So most of users found us organically. So basically it's free marketing and we have done mm -hmm. it uh, amazing job. That's why the team is so big. We are creating a lot, a lot of new content, blog, landing pages, videos, basically which, uh, which do our marketing in, instead of us. And that's why, how we are now enjoying our fruits actually. When um, many people during this time stayed at home, they were searching. So we got, basically, we stopped our ad spend for a while and we just got more and more users coming to our website than ever before, just because doing that job uh, previously really, really good, really well. So, and uh, as I said, we have to educate that something like even exists. So we are really actively uh, spending uh, uh, money on ads, like Facebook, Instagram, making sure that, hey, here's Printful, here's Print on Demand. And in most cases, we are not telling that there's Printful, there's print and demand, there's this e-commerce solution that we can uh, become your own remote CEO if you want, or you want mm -hmm. to become your own boss, or you want to just play around what's, what, with your ideas, what you have. 
So we are spending a lot of money because we are growing the category of print on demand. We are not growing print recognition. We are growing print on demand recognition. So getting into the game. And as we are one of the leaders, naturally people will come to us. Mm -hmm. uh, in uh, paid marketing, also have a uh, pretty pretty good affiliate program as well. So people, um, other entrepreneurs are actually getting traffic for us, or maybe some agents who are also working with influencers that uh, introducing print pool with them. So that's also has been working pretty well. But it's uh, it's it's much challenging to scale it out. So it's the best marketing channel, but it has some uh, max capacities as well. Uh, partnerships, um, we are one of the top apps on Shopify. And I think we have, we have integrations with everyone. I, I would say everyone. We have Amazon, Etsy, Webflow, uh, Wix. So they basically show that we exist on their platform. And for e-commerce platforms, they also need something like that. So when you want to become a customer from e-commerce platform, you have to have something to sell. So either you have an idea or you can, uh, by just using your laptop, you can source the product if you don't want to I don't know, spend a night in warehouse actually doing that. So that's also the magic which helps us as well. And we uh, integrated with Shopify pretty early. I think it was first or second year for business. So when Shopify grew as crazy as well, you know that as well. So it also helped to grow our business with, together with them. Now we have integrations with, with uh, I would say everyone, what you can imagine we have integration, uh, what you wish. Of course, there's some local ones we can add. And the third thing, you have to do your job amazingly great. We want, uh, we, uh, quality is our is main factor in any, any, any business step which you want to make. Starting from product quality, which is easy, I know, t-shirt printing, we, you with Printful, you basically, you uh, get your hands in a world leading equipment. So if there's a, someone can print a t-shirt, is the best way how you can print a one-off. Uh, we can't compete with screen printing because we are printing one-offs. And uh, also customer support. I think we have more than 100 reps now, uh, which right. make sure that our customer is happy, uh, deals with their problems, deals with their questions, that as they're trusting their business with us, we have to have, want to have this positive interaction. So, and uh, we want that there's someone human who can help you with that. With, uh, as probably can relate to Amazon, bigger companies, it's much harder to get this human support from them as, as I have heard, maybe you can, uh, you think differently. So, and that actually gets us word of mouth. So if you're helping you to do the business, you will suggest others as well to go with Printful. And uh, that's uh, quality is one of the factors how we can treat that because uh, I know we're doing a conference, a meetup, whatever. Where did you go last evening? Well, well, how did you spend your time? I was at Printful, what is Printful? So it goes like that all the time. Yes. So. Those are three main channels, how we have scaled our business and we continue to invest more and more. Now we're growing internationally, uh, adding new languages to also help basically in every aspect, making sure that I know someone from France, from Spain can use our business. We have also Italy on our, it, Italian language on our roadmap as well. Mm -hmm. So making sure that we open more doors from marketing perspective and not just from the production part, part of perspective. Because the last thing we also need is always reduction. We are not a SaaS company. You don't want to wait for your t-shirt two months, two, two weeks to, to be delivered. You want to mm -hmm. get it quickly. For sure, 100%. You guys have also an amazing culture, an awesome culture. And although the podcast is called, uh, you know, the uh, Remote CEO Show, I'm sure we can learn a ton from you guys because you do have teams all over the world. So I wanted to ask you, I know I'm going to put you on the spot here because it's not going to be an easy question, but if you had to pick two elements that are helping your teams grow closer to the company and to each other, what would they be? Uh, yeah, it's it's not an easy question. I have to think for a while. <laughs> <laughs> if you have three, man, that's totally fine as well. I just want to get some real value from what you guys do to make the company so awesome. So uh, you have to hire the right people. So people uh, build a company. And I listened to another podcast a couple of days ago. And if you're running a successful company, you're dealing with problems. Problems is one thing which basically none of the successful companies don't don't have problems they're always really there and you have to have a team which you want to resolve these problems that you have to face these problems you have to have a, a fun crowd to work on these problems so people build a company you have to be really uh, 
crucial basically on every of first step you make when you're hiring people. So you have to pick the right people who you want to work, which uh, fits your fits your fits your I know team needs. How do you want to build this culture inside? The one thing, for example, why I'm looking at people is uh, that uh, I'm not looking just for doers who will just do what I will say for them to do. Mm-hmm. So you have to come up with an idea, with the initiative, what you want to do, how you can help reach our goals. So that's one of the most important things which I'm looking at and then people who are joining us. Of course, you also need the doers, but that helps us build and grow our company. Mm-hmm. That's number one thing. And uh, second thing, hmm. Probably because I'm I'm in and I'm in Europe and in Latvia and then mm-hmm. uh, I would like to say that um, we are one of the most hardworking people and in, in Europe in the world which which mm-hmm. uh, invest a lot of time and if you care about something you invest a lot of time and that's been a really great I think one of the major points to our success that people here uh, because we are we are a pretty small country less than two million there's not so many companies who do something internationally. We have 80% of our customers in the US. I'm not thinking about Latvia in my daily life. I speak more English than Latvian as well because uh, I'm thinking about someone who, who, who does things differently from different culture. So when we are really hardworking uh, people, Latvians, so that's also could be one of the major stone points. And I'm, get, I'm pretty close back to the people that people are uh, in both sure. of my points, sorry for that. <laughs> No, totally, totally. It does make sense. And I know that you guys have a, such an, uh, an international group of people mm-hmm. as well. And I think that really helps as well because everybody comes from different backgrounds and they can bring different ideas to the table. And I really love what you said on your first point, which was you want doers, but you also want thinkers. And that's a huge part of any great business, I think, because you don't want to just be the one always telling people what to do and that's it. And then once they've completed that, they're just waiting around. That's not uh, definitely how great teams are, um, are made. Listen, I want to talk about future plans for your business, especially during these challenging times that they have revolutionized the way that people are doing business. So where do you see print on demand and printful in the next few years? Um, so um, I, would, I wouldn't say that uh, this time has changed our goal. So our business goal is uh, we have three words. Sell anything anywhere. So mm-hmm. it's, and it's not included just, that just print on demand. Uh, it's pretty broad goal. And I can a little bit talk about how, how we understand that. So by selling anything, uh, we are now currently in print on demand game. It's, it's, it's uh, something how, if you think printful, it's print on demand. We also, a couple of years ago, we launched our warehousing and fulfillment service. So you can like basically Amazon, uh, fulfillment by Amazon, basically the same thing that you can send us anything and we can ship you to our customer. And in some cases, you can even combine their print on demand item with your own item as well. So that's, and that's, if you look at the market, it's just much, much bigger market there just for full fulfillment, uh, for warehousing and fulfillment. So that's one aspect that basically we are able to sell anything. And the print on demand, I think there's no limits what you can do on demand. I know it could be shoes as well. Maybe in future also cars. I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's a, a guess, but shoes is reality. A year ago, we added also stickers. Stickers is something you usually order in bulk. We are able to produce one sticker if you need. So there's no limits, I would like to say, what you can do. And technology uh, develops all the time. I know it was uh, used to be much expensive to just print one T-shirt. I personalized one T-shirt. I was now, and that's currently in walls all the time. So there will be no limits. And the other part, uh, selling everywhere, but meaning we'll continue to open more and more locations that we are closer to our customer globally. We started just in the US, just in Los Angeles. We have facility in Charlotte. So now we work in both, both sides of the US and we can uh, offer quicker, quicker turnarounds as well. Um, then we basically, then we just entered Europe. So I'm, I'm from Europe, but we started selling in Europe just recently. So, and now Europe actually by population is much, much bigger, but there's different, different rules because it's, it's uh, so many different countries, different postal Segmented offices different. and stuff like that. 
uh, currencies as well. So you have to get that and uh, play that game. So we uh, opened a facility in Barcelona as well to work with France, Spain, Italy. That's uh, uh, quicker because in reality, package from Riga to Spain, that takes, I think, in normal days, 10 days to, to reach Spain, seven, 10 days, something like that. And while in the US, you can basically ship anything pretty, pretty quickly. That's because we are so fragmented uh, as it's a reality. Now we can be able to cut it down. And then I think in Spain, Portugal is till uh, maximum three days, uh, even uh, usually it's around two days. So it's a wow. big, big a deal breaker. And uh, probably there's still um, UK market as well, which is pretty big. We can improve the service yeah, there. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we have uh, Canada plans, so that's, and now there's Australia, Japan. So basically we want to sell globally. It's not, uh, there's no strict limits where we're going to go next, but it's uh, our desire to want to sell globally. So it's obvious it will go to Asia. Of course, we want to go to the China, but it's, it's a different market. It's much, much challenging there to be due to that. It's, it's, it's probably the most developed country when sure. you talk about e-commerce. And the previous, uh, I think, stars also helped with that as well, and uh, how they do the stuff online as well. So those are our main things. And I haven't, cha- it's, I haven't changed this time. It's just accelerated. So I think you have seen also that graph. I think now in the last three months, e-commerce share, how much people buy online has doubled. I think it used to be 14% in, in February. Now it's close to 30%. How, how much people uh, spend on, uh, buy online in the US. So it's yeah. uh, everyone who's in e-commerce will uh, go out as, as a winner. So probably the most winner will be Amazon, as, uh, as you have heard probably how many their people are hiring globally. For sure, for sure. It's interesting that this pandemic has actually propelled the e-commerce world ahead by a, probably five years. And it's crazy how the fulfillment, yeah, it's still taking a big toll. As you said, there is a lot of problems because everybody's buying online, but there's only so many infrastructures in place. But I think that once the infrastructures will pick up, everything will be super cool. Um, listen, Thank you so much for being on the show today. I know my listeners will want to, you know, find you guys online. So where can people find you online and set up their store or their, their products? Uh, you can just Google Printful or go to our website, printful.com. And um, yeah, start from there. We have amazing content. And uh, for the listeners, uh, you can use a coupon code, discount code, remote. Okay, and by awesome. entering, entering it, you will get $5 off for your first order. And it will be available just for the first hundred users. So, so be quick in this, in this, okay, awesome, in this case. For sure. So for you to encourage to order something for yourself, a custom gift or uh, start your own e-commerce store. It's a low risk idea. So you can just play around. Awesome. Thank you so much. Radish. Thank you a lot. Uh, very much. If there is any new changes in the company, I definitely want to have you on the show again to discuss them. But until next time, thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks. It was uh, was a blast. All right. Bye.